the brand new legendary infantry commander Tarek has finally landed in rise of kingdom so today we're gonna go over everything you need to know before you expertise him and if it's even worth expertising him at all man these titles and thumbnails are getting so clickbait am I right Jesus honestly I've done worse who am I kidding anyway now a lot of players wrote off Tarek and Sargon as not that interesting when they first were announced for rise of kingdoms I think a lot of those players are mainly cavalry players and archer players and honestly those troop types have some really powerful rallies some really great open field options so it makes sense why that would be the knee-jerk reaction but as it turns out both of these commanders are actually really solid they're they're really good and as an infantry player the first thing that I said when they were announced was that whether or not you think they're on par they will be used they are better than a lot of what we have in the game already for infantry and the question becomes how much better are they now I already made a video about Sargon so if you're curious about that you can go ahead and check that out but today we're going to talk about Tarek and one thing that I want to say just right up front here I don't want to waste anyone's time if you are debating between one or the other I think Sargon is the better pick I think he's easier to obtain you can get him from the wheel and I think just in general he provides more utility and he's just more interesting now with that being said Tarek is definitely going to perform really well in 1v1 fights especially in the practical open field sense one of the problems with Sargon is that he deals damage over time and so a lot of the one versus one battles that you see while they are legitimate and completely real it's you know it's a perfect environment right a lot of times in battles you want a big damage hit all to go at once and you're going to be really challenged to find a more powerful single target damage factor than what we see on Tarek so I think there's a lot to love about Tarek especially if you're a rally lead who has really good infantry equipment I think this is a must-have commander but the question becomes if you're a free-to-play player or a low spender should you invest in Tarek and today we're going to talk about that now by this point I'm sure you're familiar with what Tarek does I'm sure you've read the skills or at least watch another youtuber talk about it maybe even my reveal video so today what I want to do instead is share with you a graphic that was actually shared on my discord by a user named Testa I don't actually know if they made this or if they found it and shared it but what this graphic does is it directly compares and contrasts Tarek to Chuk okay Chuk is a legendary infantry commander that is on the wheel and a lot of players don't really find him that useful if you're an infantry main perhaps you're using him with somebody like CPO or like maybe even Harold or Alex for example but in general he's not a commander that is super Super favorable now I do think he's gonna see a bit more usage now that Sargon's in the game if you want to know why check out my Sargon video but a lot of players are seeing Tarek and thinking that he's sort of like the Chook Prime that's kind of what we're looking at here as you can see the damage factor on Tarek is insane when he's expertise the base damage is 2500 but if he's surrounded it can go up to 3400 which is absolutely insane and one of the things that makes Tark so good as a rally leader is that you're really not going to want to swarm him down right he could be paired with with Sargon which I think is going to be probably the best pair for infantry is Sargon primary Tark secondary but if you see a Tark primary he could be paired with somebody like Pakal for example and just in general that's not going to be something that you want to surround here we can see the comparison between those two additional damage factors all in all the active skill on Tark is just it's just a better version of what Chuk has if we look here the infantry attack is exactly the same if we look at damage against cavalry Tark is just double he just gets more damage to cavalry than Chuk does and the other thing to keep in mind here is that Chuk not only does he deal five percent more damage to cavalry but he takes five percent more damage from archers whereas we don't see that on Tarek's kit at all so it's double the upside zero downside so it's just it's way better Chuk has a stacking skill damage which if you're fighting in a long fight it's going to be really nice but Tarek just has 15 percent all damage flat which is going to increase the amount of skill damage that you deal as well and as you can see here if you're outside of alliance territory you're gonna get 10 percent extra march speed with Tark, whereas chuck gets 15 percent, so a little bit faster on the chuck there uh, and there's also a couple differences here okay so there's a 40 percent chance that you reduce skill damage taken by 50 percent and do a small aoe that goes up to like three or four hundred something like that whereas Tarek actually has some two really nice bonuses for rallies 30 percent defense and the attack reduction which is solid but he also has the rage reduction which is something that occurs even in the open field it reduces the target enemies rage by 240 which is huge now it does have an eight second cooldown but when we look at these two commanders comparing them one one to to the other you know you have to ask yourself should you invest in Tarek and personally I think it comes down to what you're going to be doing with him in the open field now for me he's 
obviously a, a lot better than Chuck in many different ways but the thing about Chuck is that he has a little bit of AoE which is going to be really useful when spreading the Sargon debuffs we talked about that in the Sargon video but the odd debuff is spread in AoE fashion whereas Tark has no AoE so while he does have way better single target damage factor and it's going to give you really insane trades 1v1 you're missing that AoE now we also have the 50 percent damage and you have a really solid rage reduction this is very similar to Neb if we take a look at uh, where is he my Nebu right here Nebu actually reduces the rage by a hundred but it's just a flat 100 with only a three second cooldown whereas with Tarek it's 80 per second so it's 240. I think in general you'll probably in a long fight reduce rage more with Tarek than you would with Nebu but we're talking about open field mainly in this video right because I think again as a rally lead he's a he's a no-brainer okay uh, but the difference again between Tarek and Nebu is that Nebu has AoE and so that's the biggest thing right that's the biggest thing when you're comparing Tarek to a lot of other commanders is everything on his kit is incredible solid debuff 15 percent damage he gets you 40 percent attack extra damage to cast march speed all this other stuff one of the highest damage factors in the game he has the defense tree you can't really storm down but the, the big problem is the aoe he's got no aoe and so it really at that point comes down to who are you going to pair him with in the open field so let's talk about commander pairs okay and in order to talk about commander pairs for Tarek, you have to talk about what other commanders do you actually have okay and here in the extra section we see these are like the the one cav march and the one archer march that you might have okay so we're gonna just assume that you probably have branched out into other troop types especially if you're an infantry main this video is mainly for infantry players if you're not an infantry player you're probably not looking at Tarek at all I'm just gonna be completely upfront with you guys if you didn't consider Chook then you know Tark yes he's better 1v1 but he, he kind of falls in that same bucket of like he's not really a must-have unless you're a rally leader so obviously I think a lot of you who are infantry mains probably have a Guan CPU okay if you don't have this combination you probably should focus on that before Tark anyway okay because as much as he's like new and incredible and we love to get the newest commanders uh, realistically I think you're just gonna get more bang for your buck out of this double AoE combo they are just they're so incredible together and if you've been playing your cards right since the beginning of the game maybe you have Alexander as well right now one thing I talked about in my Sargon video was doing something like this where you would have CPO Tarek and Sargon with Guan as it turns out it seems like Guan and Sargon might not be the way to go they didn't perform as well as the Sargon CPO uh, and then you might be asking okay well can you do the Guan Tarek that's something that you might consider but I would say this probably is not the pair that you want to go with either right because one thing that Guan really wants it's a little bit of tankiness and he does get that from CPO right so I think that if you do get Sargon and you pair him with CPO you can't just you can't just slap Tark behind Guan I don't think it's going to perform that well you're getting a ton of attack and you're going to deal a ton of damage but there's really nothing to mitigate that damage on, on this March right so if you get swarmed which you will because everyone swarms Guan because he's such a threat then you're, you're kind of dead in the water there so I don't think this is the play I don't think this is the way you want to go but you could do something like this okay this is absolutely a pair that you could do and if you're gonna rally this is probably the way that you want to go as well with the Sargon primary Tarek secondary and that's because you have the skill tree here you really start to ramp up that skill damage you ramp up the the rage engine on there uh and just ultimately this is this is probably the way you want to go Tarek being primary might be a, a little bit less likely to get swarmed right because you have the defense tree on there this is not an option with Guan by the way because Guan has to be primary just always because of his damage factor so if you were wondering that uh, maybe you're a new newer player but this is absolutely you know if you're only going to run two combos you could do something like this for sure now is this the best two infantry combos you can run in the open field and I would say probably not right probably not because this while this second army these new commanders are are incredible especially for rallies uh there's no aoe here there is a little bit of debuffing going on with both of the marches with the rage reduction on Tarek and and the skill damage increase on on sargon but in general i think this is like a it's it's a very it's a single target march and historically that hasn't been the most valuable valuable marches uh that we see in open field fights right and so if you're gonna do that you're probably gonna break these guys apart for open field fights we can look at herald's primary here as another pair that you might consider but again with Harold he suffers from the same thing that Guan does in that 
he's really squishy and I think a lot of people are confused about Harold lately because a lot of people think that Harold is like not somebody that you can swarm down and that's absolutely not the case Harold is one of the most squishy commanders in the entire game because every time you use your active skill you gain more attack and lose five percent defense this can stack up to 15 times you can have up to negative 75 percent infantry defense on Harold he has the skill tree there's really nothing else here yes he's dealing an insane amount of damage but he's really just stacking attack on himself uh yeah he gets counterattack damage but counterattack damage is just how much damage you're dealing out it's not how well you can survive a fight right so realistically Harold on his own is not tanky he's really not and so yes maybe you know they might consider if they see a Harold in the open field they might think oh there's a Martel behind it maybe we don't want to hit it and this is relatively tanky this combination here depending on your gear and stuff like that and there's a ton of counterattack damage so yes that that might be their assumption but realistically if you have Tark behind them you're just stacking more attack with more single target damage I just don't think that this is really the way to go you could hide your Herald behind the Tark, but that's not really solving the problem that's more so just like moving around the cards that you're dealt you could do you know something like this where you do uh a, maybe a, a Martel Tark because the debuff on the active skill for Martel is going to cause the damage for Tark's active skill to be insane that would be a 30 percent damage bonus on the active skill of Tark, which is already insane but again uh, the thing with this is like I don't know I think you could do it but again there's 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 no aoe here right and, and that's the thing with when you do the martel with herald you have the aoe on the herald when you get swarmed and you probably will get swarmed in the open field and big murder balls they're gonna see the martel they're gonna swarm it they're gonna assume that you're a new player who doesn't have good commanders and you're using a martel as a last ditch effort uh and you know they're gonna swarm it down right so either way you're gonna gain the benefits of the aoe on herald and yeah i mean his aoe is not huge like a like a song but for example it's it's still there and so we're really running into a really Really tough spot here for Tarek okay now one thing that you can consider is despite the reports being less than what we had hoped initially at least the initial test reports from the Guan Sargon I do still think it's a combo that you can run is it the best possible combo for Sargon no it's not but could it play a part in the best set of commanders that you use maybe it's your best option and if that's the case then you could easily suggest that we use a CPO with Tark. Now, what is this actually doing for you? Well, this is providing the tankiness for the Tark that you're looking for, right? CPO has some health on there. Okay. He has the shield. There's things about CPO that we love. He has the debuff, the health debuff. He has the AOE. These are all things that we love about CPO, no matter who he's paired with. And I think that he, all the things that he does sort of compensates for the things that Tark doesn't. And so here I see I think we have a, a pretty decent balance between these four commanders and then if you're an infantry main maybe you're running something like this or obviously you could do the Martel or you could do the the Pakal Herald or something like that that's ab absolutely something that you could do but really we're going to come back to what we talked about before which was is the Tarek a better investment here than the Chuk and I would say you know if you're picking between these two you have to pick really carefully and I think for me this is where it becomes a really fine line because I don't know if Tark is actually worth it for just open field fighting at the end of the day what I'm leaning towards right now as an infantry main is something like this where we have the Guan Scipio we leave it there we leave it alone and then we ask ourselves do we want the a the very small AoE on Chuk and you know the the good long-term fights with Chuk but the burstiness of of Tarek is something to question and so I think this is where you know you, you have to ask do you want the AoE on Chuk to spread the debuff from Sargon and if you do end up in a longer fight Chuk is going to perform really really well he also reduces the skill damage that he takes himself so there's a little bit more tankiness there but if what you really care about is just punching a single target as hard as you can well then there's no question you want Tarek more than than you want Chuk. I mean yes you're gonna spread that debuff to fewer armies with Sargon but you're gonna hit one army really freaking hard and there's really no doubt about that now we also have to talk about one other combination and that would be uh Tarek with Pakal okay that is another combination that we sort of have to consider here now I think this is mainly going to be against something that you use in rallies I don't really think that this is going to be a great open field option although 
what i will say is that if you're a free to play player this you know having a call out there is basically just a big sign that says it's not worth hitting me right that, that's pretty much what it is because if you are a top tier infantry player with the best gear in the game uh you know having the pakal herald is like you're you're probably going to trade even with most things that hit you i know there's you know obviously the new archers are pretty pretty powerful and that they can really hurt this combination more than they were hurt when they first came out but i still think regardless they're a really powerful combination so if you have the pakal Tarek, i mean that could be a way that you could put Tarek in the open field and really just not have him get hit i mean sure he's only hitting one target but i mean man you're really gonna melt that one target pretty dang hard it's something to consider probably not the first uh pick that i would go with but of course pakal is more tanky and that's kind of why he compliments Tarek in that way but at the end of the day i think it really comes down to are you a rally lead yes or no if not you really got to ask yourself what do you want to do with your sargon do you want to spread more of the debuffs or do you want to hit a target really hard without having to build up that skill damage over time that chuck has i think there's a really good argument to be made for both of them i would say i'm leaning towards chuck i i am and that's partially because i already have him at five 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 one so i could expertise him for way less sculptures than i could for Tark. but there's definitely something to be said about just deleting one target i think i mean it, it is what it is i think th th there's no doubt in my mind that this pair right here is going to absolutely melt single targets and hey maybe that's something that you want to do all right now let's talk about talent builds for Tarek. obviously this is Pakal, but they have the same talent builds rocktalents.com has not updated for Tarek yet so we're just just pretend this this is Tarek because again same talent build if you're gonna rally with him this is probably the build that I would go with you come all the way up here and you grab entrenched with all three points it increases the damage that you're dealing for the rally and damage taken if you're rallying that's just something that you want you also pick up bu buckler shield over here as well which we love to see in the uh infantry tree over here you come over here you grab the extra damage to cavalry which Tarek is already doing a ton of so having that is great you get the rage engine over here with undying fury the bonus health and everything else on the uh left side of this tree here you get hold the line reduce damage taken it's pretty self-explanatory and then in the defense tree for Tarek, you're gonna come over here grab master armor i think typically pakal rallies don't have this because pakal's a little bit more tanky and you would opt for more attack but i think that this is absolutely worth it we grab loose formation over here to reduce the skill damage that you take and i just put a couple of extra points in the attack over here even though Tarek has a ton it's better than march speed for a rally because really march speed is not that useful for rallies and this is probably the rally build that i would go with if you're going to open field fight with Tarek, this is probably the way that i would go uh you just go completely all in on the infantry tree and you grab a couple of different things here in the defense tree to make him tanky now if you're running Tarek in the open field he's probably not going to be primary again he's probably going to be either behind a cpo or he's going to be behind a, a sargon right because they just have better rage engines but if you do decide to run Tarek primary in the open field then hey i would probably do something like this you just basically go to the first row of the of the defense tree here of course grabbing loose formation as well off the bottom i think all three of these trees have some really nice stuff i wish we could fit buckler shield in here but unfortunately there's just not really uh, great things to take away unless you really like don't care about this march speed or the one percent defense uh you could get rid of this more march speed you get rid of some of these points right and, and you know make some of those sacrifices to grab buckler shield but i think the problem is that uh, like all three of these talent builds have just some really good stuff in them so as you can see the story behind Tarek is much different than that of sargon sargon was one that people thought was trash turns out he's really good he has really good uses Tarek, on the other hand is a uh, kind of a one trick pony he's just massive damage to one target yes he has the rage reduction but I, I don't know historically i just don't like again i'm not saying this is bad i'm just saying like in general what we're seeing here is single target damage factor through the roof and that means that his rallies are going to be devastating. You're going to be able to have really tanky infantry rallies with Tarek and Pakal or even Sargon Tarek. And I mean, that that's the rally meta. But for everybody else, I think Tarek is definitely a question mark for the open field. Perhaps I'm wrong about this. Perhaps the single target damage is so valuable to you guys that you think that he is a no brainer for infantry players. If you feel that way, I'd love to know in the comments section below. Let me know what your thoughts are on Tark in general. While you're down there, drop a thumbs up on it. It really helps out the channel a ton. It helps get this video out into the YouTube algorithm so other Rise of Kings players might see it. Consider subscribing down there and clicking the bell to be notified the next time that I upload a Rise of Kings video. And with that being said, guys, thank you so much for watching. This has been Omniarch. I will talk to you guys again soon. Peace.